Good morning. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic and which has become very confusing in the last few years as different people have coined different acronyms, terms and all. So what I'm referring to is presbyopic implants or refractive cataract surgery, laser clear lens exchange uh, and a host of other names. So let me first tell you the difference between all these lenses and a natural lens. A natural lens is a living uh, lens. That means new fibers are added to it every year and some um, muscles control it which allows it to change shape. It's like an autofocusing mechanism. When you look far, it has a different uh, focusing power compared to near where the focusing power is increased. So when I'm looking at the camera closer, my eyes are focusing more. When I'm looking far, they're relaxed and all the images fall on the retina. Now the holy grail of cataract surgery from the last few decades ever since I've been operating has been to find a lens which can mimic the natural human lens in being adaptable and changing power. Uh, we've never reached that holy grail yet, but we've come up with very good alternatives. Now, first we'll discuss the difference between this uh, lenses and glasses because that's the first confusing part because these lenses, uh, which presbyopic implants, we are calling PI, short for presbyopic implant in eye, PI for presbyopic implant, and then PI in eye shortens to PIE. If you remember this, and it's easy word to remember, it'll clear a lot of confusion. So now we'll henceforth in the rest of the video, we'll refer to the implants as presbyopic implants. Now these presbyopic implants are far superior to those presbyopic glasses or bifocal or trifocals you wear in your uh, uh, spectacles. Because when you're wearing those kind of glasses, you have to look far from the upper part and look down from the lower part. But these presbyopic implants don't, uh, are not graded up and lower. They are using some advanced nanotechnology which allows the light to split and see at all distances and we're going to discuss that in detail. So the point one number to remember, these are far superior and work differently than the bifocals or trifocals you often see on people's uh, noses and in front of their eyes. And the second thing to remember is multifocal contact lenses are not as great as these presbyopic implants or pi. Why? Because multifocal lenses sit on the cornea, but they move with every blink. They have to move to function well because that's how tears find their way behind the contact lenses into the, uh, onto the cornea, which then supplies nutrition. So if the lens was not moving, then nutrition of the cornea would suffer. And the problem with the movement of the lens is the image keeps shifting on the brain's uh, occipital cortex. That means with every blink, the lens moves up and comes down. So the image is more like a movie than a static image. And brain works best by static images. It learns faster. So when the pie sit in the eye in a constant place all the time, neuroadaptation gives superior end results than to wearing contacts. Now that we've cleared the confusion uh, between bifocals, trifocals of glasses, and why pi in eye is far superior to multifocal lenses. Let's look at the different terminology people have used for these lenses. Some people call it accommodative, some people call it multifocal, some people call it bifocal, trifocal. Others are referring to the procedure as clear lens exchange. Some call it refractive lens exchange. Yeah, yeah, don't get tired. I get tired listening to all these different names. Some are calling it relax. Um, some are calling it T-lax, pre -lax, you name it, and somebody thinks up of a confusing sounding name uh, which sounds very medical and just creates a lot of confusion in the consumer and simple people like me in our minds. So just remember one term, pi in I, pi, and then that's easier to discuss everything because we've got some FDA approved lenses right now and some more are being in the pipeline in the future years, and some are in basic research. But all will fit into the category of pi, pi in eye. 
And as we go along in this series, in the next few episodes, we are going to talk about different kinds of FDA-approved pies and which might be the best for your eye. And we'll discuss some of the areas where the miracle of pie in eye has benefited people. And also we'll uh, look at uh, upcoming future technologies. So if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to call this, or was it this, or this, no oh, this number? And let me know what you'd like to hear more. Have a wonderful day.